Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a flat lock seam using your overlocker. This technique can be used to replicate seams that you might see in active wear. To start with, I'll show you how to set up your machine. You're only going to need one needle. So I'm going to take out the right needle because I find this easier with a wide stitch. So I'll start by just unscrewing and taking out the right hand needle and just pull the thread out of the needle, put the needle somewhere safe and then take the thread and just hook that out of the way. The next thing I'm going to do is to change the tensions on the threads. I'll need a really low tension on the needle, so I'm going to turn that down to zero. On the upper looper, I'm going to leave that on three. You might find you want it a little bit looser, but you can adjust as you go. And on the lower looper, I'm going to turn this right up. So I need it to be quite tight. I'm going to go up to seven. And then if it's not tight enough, I'll go a little bit tighter after that. On the settings at the side, my stitch length, I'm going to use a stitch length of three. You can go anything from two to four as you like. And differential feed, I'm going to set it to one because I'm going to demonstrate this on a non-stretch fabric to begin with. You might, if you're using a stretchy fabric, you may need to adjust this up a little bit higher to 1.2, 1.3, or maybe up to 1.5, depending on how stretchy your fabric is and how this looks when you've finished. The flat lock stitch works really well on fabrics which don't fray, so something like this boiled wool or a scuba fabric if you're working with a stretch fabric. I'm going to demonstrate on the boiled wool. You can use this technique either with right sides together or with wrong sides together. So we'll show you both ways and you can see what that will look like. So I've got the fabric right sides together like you would do normally. I'm going to turn the machine on, push the fabric up to the front of the foot and then just lift the foot up and just push it a bit further in till it's towards the needles. Use the blade to trim off any uneven cutting that you've done. And that's my finished stitch, which looks a bit weird because of the tension settings. You can see the left needle is the light blue stitch there. The upper looper is the dark blue and the lower looper you don't really see. You can just see a tiny little bit of it on the edge and that's because it's being pulled really tight. And because it's being pulled really tight, it's pulling that really loose needle thread over. So your needle thread underneath looks like this zigzag stitch and the lower looper just sitting on the edge. But when you open it out, You get this like ladder effect on the right side and then on the wrong side you get the kind of flat lock stitch that you might see in active wear underneath. Now you can tease out this edge here a bit more if you wanted to so you can kind of use a tool either a pin or a screwdriver, a narrow screwdriver is quite good for just kind of teasing out the fabric so it's pulled completely flat. I'll just give it a bit of a wiggle and often that will make that edge come out and sit totally flat. So if you want to have the ladders, this ladder effect like we've done here on the right side, then put the fabric right sides together. But if it's the sort of active wear look that you want to see on the right side, then you need to start first with the wrong sides together. So we'll show this again. So this time, starting with wrong sides together, again, 
push the fabric under the press of it. Pull that out flat, like before, give it a bit of a wiggle, and there you go. You've got the ladder stitches now on the inside and the flat lock stitch on the outside.